Do, do, do. Hi. What's up? Anybody on here? Oh, I see somebody's watching. Hello? YouTube? YouTube? YouTube, are you over there? All right. Whew. All right, guys, what's up? Oh, I got notified on my phone that Van City Van Life is officially live. Tin foil, what's up? All right. I uh, used to have some lights going on. Oh, hold on, guys. I'm going to go turn some lights on. Go turn some lights on. I'm going to move my desk. Sorry, Crazy. Sorry, buddy. Ugh. All right. That is not any better. That's actually worse. It's actually worse, Cruz. It's supposed to be better. So we're going to... This is a really shitty image. Mm. Okay. We're going to get crafty. One second. Getting crafty. My van's a bit of a ruckus. We're going to talk about this piece of crap DJ thing I bought for 100 bucks last year. It's garbage. All right. We are going to make shift some lights here. Ooh, what's this? Use the white one. Ooh, it's got double-sided tape, too. Whoa! <laughs> I just about dropped this whole pile of... All right, one sec. We have scissors in here? Great. No scissors in there. All right, we're going to go with tape. All right, guys, back in a sec. Hole. All right, we're gonna change our lighting situation here. Oh, someone gave me a super chat. Who got here? Ah, oh, grumpy old van. Oh yeah. Oh, why well, would we, you guys are just get? Hold on. Hi, crazy. All right, we'll shut that. We got a box of goodies we might as well go through while we're here, while we're chatting. All right. Okay. Hi. You guys still there? Okay. So I got a box of goodies here we're going to go through and some other, but we need to fix our lighting situation with tape. So you guys see what, see what I'm doing here. I have this little light stuck up here. We're just going to rip it out of here for now. <laughs> We're going to... Ooh, look at that. A little better? Is it too bright? Oh, that's good. How are we supposed to hang this light up here? <laughs> Gromy, just hold it right there the whole time. That's actually a really good angle. I'm going to stick it to the computer. Is that too harsh? All right. We just taped that light to the computer. Hey, everyone. So while we got you guys here on a live stream, I got some things to go through. Grumpy old van, thank you for the beer and tacos and the super chat. But I was opening up mail the other day. And the grumpy old man guy, sorry, the grumpy old van guy, is the one that sent me my new custom Van City Van Life mat. He's on my Patreon. Well, on Patreon, I kind of said, hey, that mat he gave me is awesome, but it hurts the knees like crazy. Like, so painful. So... <sighs> I opened up the mail yesterday 
And that dick <laughs> sent me a set of knee pads, Mike Brown. <laughs> Thank you. So just for the fun of it, we're going to wear them as elbow pads in this live stream today. <laughs> uh, so grumpy old man thanks for the knee pads these are actually really comfy man i don't know if they fit me hold on ah crap another day <laughs> mike this was damn hilarious okay i got a box there's a bunch of hopefully i don't mistake in this because i threw a bunch of things in here I got mail the other day, so I want to thank, without showing addresses on this. Oh, look at it. Oh, that. Look at it. It was the Christmas card we got. So this is from Greg and Danielle in New Westminster, which is not far from Vancouver. I um, want to thank you guys for the super rad card, and thank you for all of the scratch and wins. They We have the scratch and win ticket out here called Set for Life, so... If you scratch it and you win, you win $1,000 a week for the next 25 years. I didn't win that. But thanks. It was worth a try anyway. Um, but I did win 15 bucks. Thank you. Okay. Um, I should really... There's so much stuff in here. I am so confused on what's what and who's who. So I think this is who sent me the big box. Uh, John and Sherry from Winnipeg. Sorry. Yeah, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Thank you. And thank you for the box of goodies. So we have a, a scarf. We have a great Canadian toque. Chrome, you're, you're sexy, buddy. Um, they gave me a gas card. Thank you. This is going to come in handy. And a thing for my eggs for my cooler. At least I think that's what this is. <laughs> Look at me! Mm. I can't open it. Anyway, a little thing for my eggs. And I very much could use something to put my eggs in because right now I'm leaving them in the cardboard. Oh. <laughs> and just in case Chromie ever wants to break a sweat. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Chromie, what's going on here? I love getting gifts in the mail. It's super funny. We're like a, a Chicano style. Oh, hey, S.A. Okay, what's in here? We got dog seeds for Cruzy Bear. <laughs> and a sticker that says Canadians kick ass. Yep, they do. And we got a few more Christmas cards here. All right. I can't read without my glasses on. Okay. <laughs> Don't I look sexy? And we got a Christmas card here from... This is a really cool card. Look at it. It's pretty cool. This card is from... Arlinda. A.K.A. A -A -A -R Arizona on YouTube. Thank you very much for the Christmas card. I opened up all of these already the other day. I got... You get excited when you get things in the mail. You're like, we're going to open this up off camera. And this one here is for stickers. So someone's people have been asking me, well, I don't have PayPal. How do you send stickers? Easy. You take a piece of paper and you put money in it. So these are, these are funny Canadian money. But you can send money in the mail. It's possible. So I need to remember to send these out. Self-addressed stamped envelope. That was pretty cool of you. So thank you from... Elaine K. Super cool. All right. Anybody just jumping on my live stream right now is like, what's wrong with this guy? Why is he why is he wearing a toque like that? Why do you look so funny, Chrome? All right, now that we have Christmas out of the way. That was Christmas. All right. These knee pads are actually really cool, Mike. Like there's like flimsy on the back too so they're probably pretty comfy i don't want to exactly get out of the back of my van wearing a pair of knee pads because that'd just be weird all right so how many of you guys think i look sexy right now oh Ooh, yeah okay sorry guys i'm not reading hold on let me pop this pop this chat out so i can see ya Good. 
All right. All right. I'm gonna pull back. I can see. Do I look funny? <laughs> huh. Okay. Hey, Heidi, how are you? Johnny Blaze. Susie wants to know how Cruz's leg is. Cruz is um, doing a little bit better. We had a bit of a setback the other day, but um, he's definitely doing a little bit better. Um, it's going to take some time for him to just kind of like get some no movement. Like today he was walking around pretty good. So it shows me that with a lot of rest, we could probably bring him back. But um, I'm still uneasy about it. So we'll see how it goes. Christmas Eve, we have our gathering here in Vancouver, and um, the Christmas Eve gathering could be a pretty big setback for Cruz. So, if it is, he's going to be going to the vet right afterwards. How do you work toques? Like this? <laughs> I don't wear hats, nor do I wear toques. I think they're just kind of weird. Oh, Canadian. Pop the flag up. Oh, hi, the moose is the moose. I think that's a moose. I can't see. Is that a moose? I can't see. Is that a moose? All right. I need my Ray Bands on right now. Hey, Matt, thanks for the super chat. <laughs> Susie's like sexy bugger. Uh, maybe limit treats for a few weeks. Yes, um, Cruz is on a restricted diet right now as well, too. Um, anytime he's got a sore leg. Um, obviously getting some weight off the leg is a good idea. So um, he's been on restricted activity and because of his um, really big restricted activity, his food's been cut way back because I don't want him to get any fatter. But uh, Patty Crane, no, he didn't go to the vet. I am following the breeder's recommendations before I take him into the vet. So the breeders, I give him five weeks of complete rest and um, if there's any setbacks in the first couple weeks until you get used to no mo no movement for five weeks. Um, but she's like, take him in after the five weeks. Don't take him in any sooner. Um, the recommendation reason reasoning for that was because a lot of times when you take the dog in with a fresh injury, like a fresh, fresh, fresh one, they can misdiagnose things sometimes and just rush to be shoving medication right in them right away when it's not needed. So she's like, give him a break. Give him five weeks. If he can continue to put weight on it, he's probably pretty good. But, um, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to talk about little Cruzy's little injury this whole live stream. <laughs> I can't get over looking at myself right now. <laughs> uh, uh, grumpy old man, thanks for the super chat, man. Hit the join button if you're not on, if you're not a patron. <laughs> You guys really like, are you guys really sign up for this stuff? Do you guys watch my video from today yet? Do you guys watch yesterday's video? I like those videos. They were pretty good. Uh, Nancy asked, do I have any discount codes for Patreon purchases? No. Um, I used to give discount codes to people on my Patreon for um, <laughs> look at this <laughs> for buying merchandise and stuff like that, but um, because my profit margins, I re just finished redoing the entire store because my profit margins are so low on my merchandise, I can't even give five percent discount on some things because some some of them I'm not even making five percent profit. So I reworked the store because I would rather see my merchandise be out there than me be like greedy about money. Touristique to Canada. Thanks for the super chat. Oh, um, AJ, thank you very much for the Christmas card. Nice little picture <laughs> with you, by the way, on the front. Um, I did get that one the other day. It's sitting in the front of my van right now. Otherwise, it would have been on this live stream. Thank you. Appreciate it. Tony, Tony, Tone. <laughs> I love that name. So awesome. So on that note of Christmas, um, I have a free set of knee pads if anybody needs any. <laughs> so on that note, because this live stream right here is not, oh, it's just so, so itchy. 
this live stream is probably not going to get reposted. And um, I like doing that sometimes because it just leaves it special for those who make it on here, get to see it. And those who don't, well, <clears throat> on you. I can say that because if they don't watch this, it's all good. So on that note, um, I've been putting up some DJ mixes of mine. For those of you who don't know, I've been a DJ my whole life on uh, a website that I always post my, my mixes on. And um, I've been really, now that I'm trying to take a bit of a breather sometimes from making videos. Oh, it's getting hot in here. I'll turn the fan on. Ugh. There we go. <laughs> uh, irresponsible. Uh, thanks for the super chat. Um, so, but because I, I've been really, I've had more time on my hands to spend more time with my music. And um, like today I spent a majority of my day dealing with taxes and stuff like that with my tax lady, which doing YouTube taxes, like, it, it's all fairly fresh to me. So uh, today I had to register for a business number, a GST number, and all that stuff um, because it's a new tax season coming. And because I earned more, a little bit more money this year, now I've got to apply for all of those other things that I didn't need to do. Oh, that scarf looks great. I didn't need to do last year. Um, so that was my day today. But um, And then the rest of my day today, I'm actually downloading music right now. So right here in my queue on my computer... I have 1,000, let me check here, hold on. Yeah, 1,085 songs still downloading. I haven't uploaded my music in a while. Oh, Ed, <laughs> thanks for the super chat, Ed. I haven't updated my music in, a, uh, in quite a while, but I've got the DJ bug, man, really bad. Now that I'm taking a little bit of a break sometimes from here, I've been like just in the music 100%. So... If you've been around, you know I used to have this great, big, huge pro DJ controller. It was like 3500 bucks. It was huge. And it would barely fit between that cupboard and that one. Barely fit. So, And it was so big, I didn't know where to put my laptop. But anyway, I bought that old DJ rig because I was DJing out professionally. I was doing like clubs and tours and stuff like that at the time. So it came in handy because it was big and it was flashy. So last year, I decided to get rid of it. It was a hard thing to get rid of because I love that thing. Then I bought this tiny piece of shit. It is like, it's little. Look at this little. It's like between my shoulders, small, little. This thing was like 150 bucks or something like that. It's pretty much a kid's toy. It's built from the same Pioneer DJ company that all those big controllers are from, but it's garbage. And I've made a couple of DJ mixes on it, but it deters me from playing with my music because it's a toy. And I thought, whatever, I'm in the van. It'll work. It didn't. So I've been really thinking about buying myself one for Christmas. And I don't know if I want to because, well, I do want to. I called the stereo place today. I'm like, hey, man, do you guys have the brand new Pioneer DJ SRT 1000, which is the brand spanking new, like, mm! and the guy's like, yeah, we got five in stock. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> um, so... I might buy it. The only reason, my only hesitation with buying that for myself this year is I've been really wanting to buy a pro camera, but I don't have the money to buy a pro camera and I don't have the money to buy that new DJ controller. It's a want, not a need, but I'm thinking about throwing it on my account at Long and McQuaid. And you see, I have an account there and my whole life I've been throwing DJ gear on my account. I think my credit limit on my long McQuaid account right now is eleven thousand dollars <laughs> i phone there when i talk to the guys like, yeah i got some of stock I'm like was my account what's my account still active over there and he's like dude you're a legend here your account is always active <laughs> but it's been years since i ever bought anything from there but i've been thinking about spoiling myself this year and throwing that dj controller on my account and just making monthly payments on it for the next year it wouldn't be so bad. So if I go in there and I throw $500 down on it, it might cost me 130 bucks a month for 12 months. 
something like that. So I don't know. I'm debating. I really want it. It's like something in here is like, mm, I just want to play with my music. So anyway, I just talking to you guys because you're my friends and my posse and we're just having a chat. You know what I mean? And I like having these talks with you guys because sitting here in <laughs> sitting here in the van and just having like friendly talks with you guys really makes me feel super connected to you guys as a channel. And I know not everybody enjoys live streams. And I know those who show up to my live streams are usually big fans of my channel. You know, they're usually people that have been around for a while or new people that are really interested in this side of me. Because live streams are not the edited music field versions of somebody. You're getting me. You're getting the raw, uncut version of myself. And um, that's why I like sometimes to just chat with you guys about stuff like this. So I'm not reading the comments that are flying up right now. But what do you guys think? You guys think I should go spoil myself and buy that DJ controller? The, the cost of the controller is 1800 bucks Canadian before tax. $1,799 or something. But, um, which is, and it's smaller. It's like my huge one, but a little bit smaller. Like it would fit on my desk with some room to spare and not so bad for storing in the van. That was my only thing about it was it gives me all those pro features that my big one had but in a smaller footprint so so i'm missing some stuff all right guys i'm missing super chats here i've been too busy chatting with you guys and not, not watching <sighs> uh kelly love listening to your mixes awesome kelly super cool you went over there to check them out uh todd oh todd thank you what's up bro finally cut up to a live stream <laughs> Todd, thank, thanks for the super chat, man. Robin, thank you so much. Much love to you and Cruz. <laughs> Grumpy old van, DJ, two bucks for the DJ controller challenge. You're a good dude, Mike. Uh, Kelly, thank you. Kelly says buy it. So look at you guys saying buy it. See, like I'm not looking for your guys's. You know how people want to buy things and they try to keep talking until they convince themselves into it? Maybe that's what I'm doing. Maybe I'm just trying to convince myself to buy it. See, what holds me back is like, I want a real camera. I want so badly to buy a real camera. And if I go out and buy this, it's going to hold me back from buying that real camera. You know what I mean? And I know my YouTube videos do great with just my iPhone. My iPhone XS Max. You guys can't see that. <laughs> you guys don't need to see all my notifications either. Come on, shush. My iPhone with my picture of my tattoo on there. <laughs> it's my hand <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> um, it does really well. And I've been dreaming about buying a real, real camera for a very long time. But um, last time I was dreaming about it, it just made sense for me to buy the iPhone XS Max. It just kind of, and it worked. It was better than my iPhone 7. But the reason why I've been wanting a, a, um, a real camera is because it opens up my, my filming ability. Like I can capture things in a different angle. I'm not really different. I can capture things in a different depth from a different distance in a different perspective with a different camera that I can interchange lenses on. Where this one... I got one option, one, zoom or no zoom. <laughs> and then I can screw those little $100 lenses I have for moment on there. And it works great to get capture a bit of a wider shot, but yeah, streaming. It's that pre-Christmas thing. You guys ever get that pre-Christmas? You guys, I don't know why I do. I get that feeling like I just want to buy myself something. Always feels like, you know what? You've had a good year. Things have been epic. Spoil yourself a little. But my problem now is I'm spoiling myself with money that I don't have. Borrow money from Long and McQuaid. Hey, Long and McQuaid, throw it on my account. Now, if Long and McQuaid sold cameras, we would have all the goodies right now. I'm not kidding you. If Long and McQuaid, the stereo store in Canada, if they sold real cameras, I'd be in trouble. I'd be in debt. I haven't been in debt in a super long time. Um, Philip says, got the iPhone 11 pro likes the camera lens. Yeah. Super great. I mean, I, myself, this is my last camera phone. I'll never purchase another phone for its camera. 
um, because this has been really great, but upgrading to a $2,000 phone by the time it's all said and done, 2000 bucks is quite crazy. I think, I think that the phone equivalent to this in size, I like the Max because it's got a nicer screen for filming on. But uh, they're like 1500 bucks with the 512 storage. Canadian. So it's like 1700 bucks by the time the taxes and stuff all close themselves in. Uh, irresponsible. Thank you. Merry Christmas to our favorite YouTubers. <laughs> You're awesome. Cruzy. Cruzy's eating a bone right now. I got him a big raw bone to keep him keep him shushed while we're live streaming here. <clears throat> Bought myself a six pack of a little something. Cheers to that, girl. Yeah, I like that. Get a real camera. I would like to, man. It's just so hard right now because every time even last year i thought about buying like the canon dslr i thought about buying the ADD because they were older they're cheaper to put the lenses on but everything nowadays is going mirrorless so it's like do you buy the dying breed of dslrs or do you buy a mirrorless and then a lot of the mirrorless cameras don't have a proper flip lens so you could vlog and see your face because i find on my phone because here's what happens. The opposite side of my cell phone. Where are we going here? So this side of my cell phone yields a better image. So if I vlog this way, it's a shittier image, but I can also screen my shot. If I vlog this way and I'm walking down the street, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. Everybody can see my face on the front of the camera while I'm vlogging, running down the street. It's a bit of a weird thing. So, but what I find is when I'm talking into this side of my phone, it's very heartless. It's got no soul, no feeling to it. And I lose track in what I say because there's no bounce back. You know what I mean? And it's weird because when you vlog and see yourself, you can kind of vibe with yourself, a really weird way to put it, but you can vibe with it. So doing vlogs this way is kind of lifeless. And a lot of the mirrorless cameras that are out there that I've been looking at, like the Sony a7 III, doesn't have a flip or a, a side flip or a top flip one. And that's the problem is because any cameras that do have that are on the lower side of the camera spectrum. And if I'm going to invest $2,000 in a damn camera, I want a good quality camera with a proper flip lens. Do you know what I'm saying, though? So, because a lot of them, like, like even the Sony. Sony has the A6500, which is, quote, the vlogger's camera. It's a good camera. It's got the flip up lens. Problem is, is that it doesn't... It's something that I would probably end up upgrading in a few years. And I want to buy, I want to invest the money into a camera like that, that I'm not going to upgrade in a few years. Much like myself learning buying DJ equipment from my past, you buy what's industry standard and it will last you for freaking five or more years. Do you know what I'm saying? So Journey misses A6400, A6500 still, but those are cameras that have features that I don't want. You know what I mean? Like the A6500 is a good camera from Sony, but I would prefer more of like the Sony A7 III. And all those stupid idiots have to do is put a flip lens on all their cameras and people like me would probably be more prone to buying them. Um, Kathy says she's freezing her tushy off. Look at my look at my headdress. Alberta Adventure Family Canon DSLR, and see, and that is the most viable option. It's crazy because I think the whole the whole um, DSLR thing's probably going to be going to the wayside in a year. So I don't know if I want to like invest in a DSLR that's going to be useless in a few years, but Canon would probably be the best choice 
because the lenses are so damn cheap. Like if I were to take like the Canon 90D, which is like the newer one, I would have take the Canon 90D and add the lenses that I would want to vlog. It would probably be 2,500 bucks for that setup. If I were to buy the same rig in a Sony, most of the Sony lenses are like 800 or 1500 a piece when a lot of the Canon ones you could pick up for like a few hundred bucks. So Canon will be the way to go if I were to choose that. I just don't know if I want to jump jump the gun on a um, on a camera too fast because the new year is coming, which means everybody's going to have their whole new fancy things coming out for 2020. So I might wait to um, wait to run that one. Uh, Stone says um, DSLR cameras are heavy to vlog with. Yes, but the Canon 80D and the 90D just feels real in your hand. It's got a way. If you've never held one, when you hold that camera, it's like those cameras were meant to fit in your hand. There's just something so comfortable about them. Um, I missed another one here. Uh, Red... Red, white, and you adventures. Oh, thanks for the Christmas present, man. Really appreciate that. Um, oh, I was looking on my site where I was uploading my DJ mixes to, and apparently there's a live stream option. So if I can figure that out, um, because I can't do it on YouTube because me putting me having my DJ mixes live on YouTube breaks all copyright laws as a DJ. Um, so I can't actually put my DJ mixes on YouTube, but there is an option on my, on hear this dot at where I upload all my DJ mixes to that I can live stream. So I'm thinking if I can look at the setup and see the software I need to do it, I might like put a blast notification out to everybody on all my social media so they can come over and just hear me playing around in the van. That may, might be kind of fun. Um, I don't know if it'll be video. It just might be audio. I thought that may, might be kind of cool for, for me and for you guys. At least it's a little bit of content out there. Excuse me. Tour seat to Canada. Keep with your phone. I will keep with my phone, but I would like the camera for a lot of my B-roll shots. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah. Because I... Touristy to Canada, I totally get keeping the phone thing because, I mean, I've been vlogging for two and a half years on just my cell phone. It's time to, like, change an image. You know what I'm saying, though? Because there's a huge difference between vlogging with some different lenses versus just an iPhone. There's a massive difference in the production quality of a video. And that you can't deny. But you also can't deny the ease of this. Think about it. I make my living right here. This is what I earn my living on. I edit on my laptop, but this films everything. I don't have an external microphone. All the audio you hear gets captured in here, unless it's voiceover and then it's on my big mic. But uh, yeah, man, if you guys ever want to start creating content, cell phone. Don't get caught up in fancy ass gear. So for me, what's happening is two and a half years in the van and I'm getting caught up in the fancy ass gear. It's time. It's just time to, for me, I'm feeling it. It's the whole new 2020 thing coming up. I'm feeling like I need to boost some production value to keep things interesting for me. It's not for you. It's for me. And having the fun to be able to play around with like different camera lenses and different, you know, like different things like that I can do with a professional or, or semi-pro camera um, makes my side of creating videos just a little bit more fun. Throw on the camera up with my cell phone. It just becomes mundane sometimes. It'd be nice to just get some like buttery, smooth, just like whoosh, shots where it zooms in. Ah! See, even just thinking about it gets me excited. Chrome, calm down. Now. Chrome, calm down. Chrome. Uh, yeah, see, see Stone, um, like that's what I'm talking about. Many YouTubers use the Canon G7X. Yes, many Many YouTubers that are just doing simple run and gun stuff, no fancy B roll footage, no, and uh, you know, you guys know my videos. I feed on on getting pretty shots. I love finding that crispy image of some 
trees or some plants or lakes. That's where the big fancy camera comes in. A lot of the guys that are running gunning with the Canon G7X are just running gunning doing daily just quick pace vlog stuff. They're not capturing that cinematic footage, which I seek. So that's where the new camera thing comes in. Do you like country music, Chrome? <gasps> Honestly, I don't mind it. Shh, don't tell anybody from my DJ past. I actually don't mind country. Country is just like, it's got that good feeling, good vibe. You wouldn't catch me cranking it up while I'm outside partying with friends, but I do, I do, you know, enjoy listening to it if I'm like driving in the van sometimes and I just need some something a little bit different. Uh, AJ likes those shots too. And that's where the pro camera comes in. You know what I mean? Like, if you watch anything that's cinematic on YouTube, and I'm not talking about your regular van life channels because your regular van life channels are just capturing run and gun shit. Like, I'm seeking more bigger documentary style footage. Like, I would like to level my game up on here, and it doesn't come down to editing. It comes up on the image that's yield in a pro camera. Um, TN, thank you. Happy holidays in Vegas. Thanks, man. Uh, Jaden, what about that fish eye? I have a fish eye lens for my iPhone. I have two, I have three lenses for my iPhone. I have the moment, which is they're amazing lenses. I have the moment wide angle, the moment 58 millimeter, and the moment um super wide, which is the fish eye. I don't use it. It was a waste of a hundred bucks that fish eye lens. It's a ridiculous image that for me and my style of video filming, it just doesn't come in handy enough. The fisheye is great if you're doing like adventure stuff. If I'm always like out on the trail and you know, stuff like that, it captures well. That's like the GoPro image. I have a GoPro. Um, I just even that I don't use very often, but I do have a GoPro camera. It's one of those things where it's like you wish, you know, <laughs> Mike, grumpy old van, two bucks. Thanks for thank fine fine dancing lessons. No thanks, Mike. I'm gonna pass. Line dancing lessons in the knee pads you bought me. Real sexy, Chrome. Real sexy. <clears throat> What's up, Edward? Happy hump day, bro. Heather, Patty. I really wish there was a way I could turn my Pat my Patreon supporters on here to um to show us Patreon supporters. It doesn't work that way. The only supporters that you notice on here that support me on YouTube with that little join button, there's a little, little sticker beside them that says, What's up, weirdos? Pretty cool. <laughs> Heidi, good question, Heidi. I'm going to avoid that question. It's water. Heidi, there's water in the cup. Because you sip water. That's what you do with water. I drift to a dream. Hey, so yeah, as, as you can tell, Grumpy Old Van and a Drift to a Dream have that little square box on there that kind of lets you guys know that they're they're the uh, people that support me through um, the YouTube join button, which is new. I'm having a hard time with that. So for those people on here that are on my YouTube one, I'm having a hard time with um, with that YouTube join platform because it only gives me one option to share with you guys. So I message the YouTube creator guys from YouTube, which are pretty good for like putting things into movement. So... Because I can only share pictures and text with you guys. And I'd like to be able to share little video clips. And because YouTube has the, the YouTube stories that I can share publicly, I would love to be able to share YouTube stories with anybody who's a member on my channel through the join button. Be able to share like little video clips with you guys. Because we have that option on Patreon, and which is great because I'm big on busting my camera and saying, what's up, guys? So we'll see. Maybe they'll fold that out in this coming year. But... Um, yeah, I have a hard time with that. <laughs> I just got a notification on my phone that I'm supposed to get tomorrow. It's supposed to be for 6 a.m. tomorrow, and I just got it today. <laughs> Way to go, Siri! Way to go for wrecking my messages. Hey, Chrome, what about getting a drone? Um, yeah, I'd like to get a drone. Um, that's also on my purchase list, but that's not very high up there on my purchase list. Oh, happy capper kits. What's up, buddy? Uh, thanks for the super chat, man. So happy camper kits is the guy responsible for building 
all of this amazing madness. Yeah. Andy, I love this thing. So good. So I like to get a drone, but the problem with buying a drone is it's not very high on my to-do list of things that I really, really honestly should buy because for the amount of little bit of usage it's going to get in my vlogs, I don't think it's going to be as much of a big of a tool as I think it is going to be. I think getting a real pro camera would be the first option. Second option after that, I think would be to attach a drone to the arsenal because really ideally, if you look at it, a drone footage, you might get 10 seconds in a whole video. So if I were to spend 2000 bucks and buy myself a proper drone, not no little toy piece of shit, like those little $500 little, um, the Mavic minis or whatever they are. I mean, they yield a great image, but so you got to think about this when you buy a drone, but like, oh, I could buy the Mavic mini for 500 bucks Canadian. Yeah. But am I ever in a year from now going to want to buy the Mavic 2 Pro or the Mavic 3 Pro if it comes out? Heck yes. So that 500 bucks is, end up gonna, is gonna end up being a waste anyway. So those kind of situations, sometimes it's good to um, just wait and buy the real stuff. <laughs> yeah, Journeyman, you're right. You know, there's a, um, in Canada, we have really strict drone policies up here, but that's no big deal. Um, everybody always freaks out like, oh, there's a $4,500 fine if you get uh, if you get nailed flying a drone. Yeah, but that's why you just get a license. It's problem solved. Like, it's not a big deal to get a drone license. It's actually very easy. Um, but yeah, that's that's just a no-brainer thing to go do. I'm not, I wouldn't even worry about that one. But that'll just be a piece of getting a drone. How do you support on YouTube using phone? I don't wandering Bra um, Brady's. I don't get that one. How do you support on YouTube? You oh, how do you support? Oh, you talking about the join button? Good question. Very good question. I'm gonna click on another YouTube's channel. Find out. I don't know who I know who's got the join button. Let me find out here. PewDiePie. Sorry, PewDiePie just popped up in my stream. What is going on, guys? We are no, I don't, I don't see it on the phone, so I have no idea, guys. But I know when you're on a desktop and stuff like that, there is that little join button at the bottom. I think you guys can join from super chats here. Hold on a second here. I can't super chat my own. I think you can actually join from the super chat button. If you click the money button on the super chat, I think it pops up as an option. So if anybody wants to click it and find out, that'd be cool to know because I can't super chat myself. Let me be curious enough. You just you don't have like once you click the money button that you're not obligated to anything. You just click it and find out. But I think there's a way to do it from there, because I was watching. I know some people are gonna hate on this, but I was watching the Matneys um, yesterday on their live stream, and I sent them twenty bucks. And I think that option came up when I went to go send them a super chat. Yes, I do super chat other YouTubers every time I catch another YouTuber online. I always send them a super chat. Um, but I sent the Maddie's 20 bucks the other day. And I think that was like the bottom option. It says join memberships. So yeah, Ed just said, yes, it's there. So there's another option too. If you're on your, on your cell phone and you can send a super chat on your cell phone, the option should be there as well too. Oh, uh -huh. uh, Heidi was on the Maddie's live stream. Yeah. I always do that. You know what I mean? I always give other YouTubers and usually like, I don't watch a lot of like what they would call the bottom of YouTube YouTubers. I don't watch those guys. I mean, I'm more into like, if I'm going to watch another channel, I check up on like Eamon and Beck, Nomadic Movement, the Matinees once in a while, but I don't watch their content. I like to check up on them. And if I see those guys online, I'm throwing money at them. Of course I am. You know, it feels good sometimes to throw, to, to throw a little out there and, you know, I know some people like that might not need the money, but it's just a good gesture. And for me, it's good for business. <laughs> a sad thing to say, but it's cool to see another YouTuber pop up on another YouTuber's feed and throw somebody 20 bucks because then those people might be like, who's this van life guy, Van City van life guy? 
So it's kind of like a $20 advertisement, sort of. You know what I mean? But yet kind of helping out the creators too as well. Nancy likes nomadic movement. Yeah, they're good people, man. I just watched their live stream tonight, actually. They um he went he came back here to USA from Panama to visit uh visit the wifey and surprised her on live stream tonight it was pretty cool. John James, it's good karma. You got it right. You know what I mean? It's like when sorry guys, I'm just playing around with the tape. Um, it is definitely good karma because you know, the way I think of it is I know how I feel on my channel when people give to me. So it's always nice to give that feeling back to somebody else because I know personally how good it feels. So it's kind of nice too. It's always good to hear your name name on a live stream. Someone's like, oh! like even the other day when I was watching their channel, I'm like, they're, they're said my name. Silly. So silly. Chrome, you're a YouTuber yourself. Why are you excited when somebody else says your name? <laughs> oh, that's so dumb. Is that really dumb that I was excited about that? I'm like, they said my name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put my hat back on because you know, just because. Tony, Tony B, hi Chrome, how's Cruz? Uh, Cruz is doing okay. He's getting some rest on the floor. I'm trying to keep him as calm as I can, but uh, he's chilling on the floor right now. I'm gonna shut this heater off, man. My legs are legs are hot. <laughs> uh, Heidi says, oh yeah, if you're talking about the Matinee's live stream, it made the chat blow up. Um, I, I logged offline right afterwards. I didn't stay online. I just popped in there, seen them live, gave them some money, and I bounced out. <laughs> Funny! Yep, I am Canadian. I got these for Christmas from somebody. They sent me them in the mail. So if you're logging on right now, that's why I'm wearing it. Your Christmas present. I'm supporting it. There's more stuff here too. I should support. I should turn that bandana into a bracelet. Well, an armband. Huh? Turn this into a little armband. Hey. There you go. <laughs> There's the thumbnail. Hey, <laughs> like the Canadian Canadian Mexican guy. Oh, hey, what's up, I say? <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't read anything without my glasses. Do I look Mexican a little bit? Hey, I say, you a little white for a Mexican chromie. Uh, Suzanne, I am a mixed breed of mixed breed. My name is Chrome Valdez, so you can figure that one out. I'm part white. <laughs> I'm a mix of, a mix of, yeah, mix of stuff. Mitch, you look like a homie. Hey, have you ever seen those little homie dolls? Those little homie dolls. I remember those. Anybody remember those little homie dolls, or that was just me? You used to have these little dolls, like these little, like this whole like Chicano family. They were so awesome. I had a shelf full of them at my lowrider shop a long time ago. Not like lowrider shop, like a business, but a shop of mine where I kept my lowrider cars. Super awesome. Oh, Heidi used to collect them. Those are wicked, right? If you don't know what those little homie dolls are, just met, just Google them. The little homies, they're so cool. Susie, am I sipping some tequila yet? No. No, I am not. <laughs> Hello from Greece. How much expensive is that hobby with van travel? I love it, but don't know about cost. Okay, hold on. Hello. Sorry, Ben. Chats are flying by so fast. Hello from Greece. How much expensive is that? Is is that hobby with van travel. Okay, so um, your English is obviously a little bit all over the place here. Um, or your spelling or whoever, or Siri, if that's doing your spelling. Siri, you can't trust that chick. <laughs> Siri's drunk on a constant. So if you're talking about how expensive... See, I, um, 
What's your name? Stalinios? Stalinios? What do you mean by hobby? What hobby? Are you talking about living in the van hobby or DJ hobby or picking my nose hobby or drinking tequila hobby or whatever other kind of hobbies? What kind of hobbies I got? Tattoo hobbies. Let me know what, what you mean by hobby. Or you, if, if you're talking about van life, I can answer that one. Easy peasy. Yes, yes, living in a van. All right. So that's a good topic. That's a good question. People don't ask those kind of questions on live streams very often. And if they do, I never, ever see the messages. So the cost of van life. Mine's very expensive. <laughs> so the cost of van life depends on you and how you want to travel, how you want to live, how frugal you would like to be. But it's all going to depend on who you are. Right? So, sorry guys, I'm just having some fun with my, I don't get a chance to have a hat or a tukey on my head. Um, so, van life can be as cheap as 500 bucks a month. You know what I mean? Like, if all you got to do is pay for insurance and do your grocery shopping very frugally and not drive around very much, you can get away with van life being $500. But if you're a person like me who... See, this is so hard. I, you know, it's really, really tough. Let me explain this to you guys. So we have 322 people on here. So all right, guys, listen up. Chromie's about to break, break a secret. It's not a secret. But when you're watching other van life channels, seriously keep in mind that we travel and film videos for a living. And if you're watching a, a channel who's doing very well, like me, in the last year, we've done very well. Like we were, we were supporting ourselves. But these smaller channels that are like one, two, three thousand people, bit of a different story. Those are the ones that are probably going to give you a more accurate cost of van life because they're really technically just living in a van like you would. Where I'm living in a van, but I'm also running a business. Are you guys having a hard time watching me? <laughs> I keep seeing my face and my man, he's really watching this. So I run a business out of my van and my business is creating YouTube videos, which means my living expenses are extremely high. They're a lot higher than the average person. You know what I mean? Like they're a lot higher than the average. So if I were to give you a cost breakdown, it would be removing all of my major things. So if you're talking about van life travel, my suggestion, if you want to know how much van life traveling is, figure out your monthly gas budget and only travel within that monthly budget. So if you have money coming in every month and you have a certain amount you're allowed to spend, then that's as far as you're allowed to go forward every month. So what I did on this trip is I ended up traveling way too far, farther than I should have, meaning that this trip probably cost me another $1,500 more in fuel than it should have. But van life travel is literally as cheap as you want it to be. Since I've been back in Vancouver, I have been living so cheap. It's crazy. The guy I've barely gone through. I think since I've been here the last week and a half, the last two weeks I've been around down here, I've probably gone through less than 100 bucks in gas in two weeks. I haven't done anything. I've been sitting around here. I went to a Christmas party. That's why you've seen a lot of talking videos from me lately is because I'm just sitting still waiting for this money to come in so I can top up my emergency fund because right now my checking account still has whoop, zip in it, but it's coming. My next YouTube payout should be able to put a nice, a nice stack in there anyway, so that'll be great. But think about van life as the basics. Think about van life as the cost of insurance, the cost of cell phone, and other little mini things you might have, gym membership or anything else like that. Then figure out how much money you spend on gas right now going back and forth to your day-to-day -day drive and just add that to it, right? And when you travel, travel slow, super, super slow. When I mean slow, I don't mean 30 kilometers an hour for 24 hours a day. <laughs> slow, I mean driving one hour a day. Pull the plug, you're done, which is, you can get a long way. So if you take a look at this. If I want to drive to the Yukon, which is the next province above us here up north. I look off the north right now. <laughs> so the next province up from us from Vancouver or BC is the Yukon. 
that's about 24 hours to drive to the Yukon. So if I plan that trip in 24 days, gets me one hour a day ahead, which is super affordable to travel. And within a month, I'll be in the Yukon. Or you could make that drive in three days and smash out all that highly expensive money for gas and then go, oh crap, now I got three more weeks of driving up here. Now your expenses are just going to keep piling. So just that's how I that's how I like to look at things. I'm like, okay, so if I want to go to the Yukon for my summer trip this year, just say I don't know where I'm going yet. 24 hours. So that's and then if I was just going to go to the Yukon and drive straight back, that's 50 hours. That's one month and a half or two month and a half, whatever month, 50, that's probably close to two months to go to the Yukon and come back. Uh, wandering, um, sorry, man, I just lost that chat. Wandering Brady's, uh, thanks to the sticker. That's hilarious. Thanks to the super chat. Much appreciated. Joshua, taco money, big homie. Oh, I like tacos. Even though right now I look like I should be eating some smoked salmon, me and the old Canadian yeah. <laughs> I don't want I like somebody bring up tacos. Every time we do a live stream, people always bring up tacos. How do you wear toques? I don't know how to wear a toque. How do you wear a toque? Keep that one ear warm. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. I love it. Let's see those stickers. What stickers? You want my stickers? What? My stickers are in my drawer down here. Excuse me, guys. Don't get fresh. Easy. Come on. Get in the drawer. Come on. Sticker number two. Is the weirdos you like one? Come on. All right. Ooh. Okay. These are the ones you wanted to see? Van life because normal life sucks? That's a cool sticker. Everybody needs one of those. And bam! I love this new logo. People hated on this new logo when I first made the announcement. Check it out. So many people are like, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. It needs to have you and Cruz's face on it. I think this logo is hella marketable. It looks great. It's simple. It's straight to the point. I dig it. In a big way. In a big way. I like it because now I can brand this all over everything and not worry about me going any grayer or me for some reason shaving my beard off and just keeping my goatee because for the long for my whole life I just had this goatee. It wasn't until probably three years ago I grew the beard. Um, but yeah, I like to know that my logo is not going to expire. And even if I bought another van, I don't even have to change that. It's still to the point. I probably would change that. I don't want to put my sticker on my face. Ah, uh -huh. there we go. Hey, a little, a little advertisement right there. We're good to go. I feel sorry for anybody who's logging on this live stream that's never seen my YouTube channel before. Like, who is this guy? Who is he? Who let the dogs out? Oh, uh, Isabel, thanks for the super chat. John James, thank you. Get a tank of gas on me. Happy holidays. John James, much the appreciate it, man. I love that. That's amazing. So cool of you guys, man. So cool. <laughs> I am feeling really bad today. I feel bad that I'm not remembering reading everybody's messages just the last few. And there's a lot of them in here, man. Shit. Let's go right back to the beginning. <laughs> oh, it's not letting me go all the way back to the beginning. It's stopping at a certain point. All right, we're going back to the bottom. Sorry, guys. Are you Puerto Rican? No! Nope, I'm not Puerto Rican. No. Nope. I look Puerto Rican? Really? No. Nope. Um, so the weather here in Vancouver, that's what we all want to talk about is the weather. You guys want to talk about the weather? <laughs> 
Weather in Vancouver is some bullshit. True that. So my sneaky reminder to you guys to buy some stickers. Not dropping any hints or anything, you guys. Not at all. So that's better. All right, we're good. <laughs> you guys really watching this weirdo in a van? So this is for everybody that ever commented on my video saying, Chrome, you're not weird. Fuck you. <laughs> I've seen that a lot. Of people are like, you're not weird. You're not weird at all. I am weird. Ow, that poked me in the eye a little bit. And people don't always see this side of me all the time. You always... Because it's hard to do this in an edited video. You guys want me to like, sit there and be like, Hi, guys. Welcome to Van City Van Life today. <laughs> what kind of fucking question is that? Denise, am I embarrassed of my nationality? No. I'm not. I'm a mixed breed. I'm like literally the product of... A multi, I don't even want to say. No, I just have multiple nationalities inside of me. I'm not just white and I'm not just Mexican or anything like that. I actually literally have a combination of everything. I'm not, I don't have a, a nationality in me to be proud about. Does that make sense? Like when someone's like mostly, I don't even know, like mostly like, Mexican. If they're all Mexican. They're proud to be Mexican. Or if somebody's like 100% something, they're proud to be that. I'm a mixed breed. I'm a mixed breed of a whole bunch of whack of stuff. So there's like, I don't have that. There you go. Heinz 57. That said it right. I don't have that cultural thing. You know what I'm saying though? I'm Canadian. Is that, is that enough? I'm Canadian. Even though I've got different races. I'm a damn Canadian. I'm a weirdo kin. There you go. <laughs> That's hilarious. Certified weirdo. Yeah, I'm 100% Canadian. I came from a vagina. What more do you need to know? It's where I came from. <laughs> How do you say that? Gerald, I'm proud to be Mexican American. Yeehaw! So I don't know. I got a bunch of mixed stuff in me. Who knows? <laughs> Coach Canadians are all mixed up. You got that right. You know, I think Canada, we're just like all just proud to be Canadians, eh? <laughs> we don't all say A, eh, by the way. Eh? That's hilarious. <laughs> Susie's like, go vaginas! <laughs> Anybody that just logged on now just hear me say, go vaginas. They're like, well, what's going on, Chrome? Uh, Vanessa, my dream van. Vanessa, this is a weird, this is a hard question to answer because I'm kind of living in my dream van. This is not my dream van, but yet it is my dream van. Let me explain. If this van didn't have so much underlying rust underneath, this would be built into my dream van as we speak. I, all the things I want and need out of a van would be getting done to this one. But <laughs> look at me. Ugh. But because my van's got so much rust underneath, even though I did the body work to kind of clean up the rust, I don't want to do the add-ons and the upgrades to this van because this van sooner or later, hopefully later than sooner, is going to rot apart. You know what I mean? It's gonna. There's gonna be chunks of like rust that's gonna knock off, and all the rest work we did end up gonna be going backwards. It's eating itself from the inside out, like most vans with rust do. We did the best we could this year to clean it up, but I can already see it popping back in. But I'm living in my dream van. So if I were to buy another van, it would be this one. I would buy another Ford Econoline. I would put a high top on it. I would paint it with some badass paint or wrap it up in some crazy wrap job. Weirdos Unite and stuff on the side of it. Some cool graphics. It, it would be either a four-wheel drive. If not, it would be a jack. Okay, this is getting. <laughs> it would be a jacked up two-wheel drive ladder roof rack 
lights, big tires, and a winch on the front to pull me out of any dirt I get stuck in. But I'm technically living in my dream van. These Ford Econoline vans or the Chevy Express vans, they just fit on the trail. So when you're going down places that have narrower trees and stuff on the trails, these vans, they may be bigger, but they're smaller on the trail. You know what I mean? Where if you're getting into doing like a Pro Master, they're just way too big for the trail, man. I would beat the crap out of that Pro Master. Trees would be dragging along the top of it. It wouldn't be a pretty sight. But I'm technically, I'm living in my dream van. So if I were to do another one, it would be another Ford Econoline or it would be the Duramax diesel Chevy Express. High top. Ah, uh, Hank, thanks for the super chat, Hank. Grumpy old van. Did you really just give me a super chat to thank Casey? Did I miss a super chat? Oh my gosh, did I miss one? Oh, oh, Eric Casey. Uh, happy early Christmas, Chrome. Keep up the great work. Check your P.O. box in the next week for a big surprise. What'd you send me? What'd you send me, Eric? Did you write a note in it? Because I did receive a package the other day that didn't have a note in it. So I never put it on camera because I don't know who it's from. I don't put things on camera unless there's a note or something attached to it. Because I did that once a long time ago. It was from a company who sent me a product and I put it on my mail time video and then they emailed me and thanked me for putting it in there. And I'm like, you little prick, you really just snuck something in my mail time video. So ever since then, if there's not a note attached to anything in my mail, it never makes it on camera. That company was being a little sneaky. I was angry with them. I told them to shove it up their wazoo too. They, pro they were from China. They probably didn't understand a word I said. Man, we should put this on a toque. What do you guys think? Oh my gosh, what do you guys think? Van life because normal life sucks, toques. Embroidered on the front. Woo! I'm digging that. I'd never wear a toque. I'm not a toque kind of guy. I like this idea. This is such a cool sticker. Where's Cruz? Cruz is passed out sleeping on the floor. And he's snoring. Ah, oh, Jennifer. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. With the, Was that purple juice or the red juice? Thank you, Jennifer. I love the sticker. Super cool. Uh, Vanessa, thank you very much for that. That was really appreciated. <laughs> Super cool. Grumpy van, you take one. These are cool, right? I should look into that. Um, when I get some time here, I've been really just spending a lot of my free time right now with my music, and it's been super nice. Um, you guys hear that? Hold on. Let me unplug my... I'm going to put you guys on the floor. Listen to Cruz. He's snoring really loud. Oh, I can't put you on my floor. My light's attached to my laptop. Cruz is snoring away. I don't know if you guys can hear him. He's being super loud. <laughs> can you guys hear him? <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him. But I can hear him. <laughs> He's passed out. Me and him went for about a 15-minute walk today because that's about all I can take him on until his leg's better, but he's uh, walking around pretty good today. Puget Sound RV guy, what's up, man? Nice to have you on the stream. Sorry. <laughs> I love the mute button on here. It's so great to have. He's just sawing logs back here. Nomad Mike, you can hear it too. That's funny. <laughs> so good. All right. It's probably a million questions I missed. He needs a sleep app machine. Yep, he does. All bulldogs need a sleep apnea, sleep apnea machine. What, sleep apnea? Is that what that is? Oh, Disco G-more. Good one. 
Disco used to snore loud. Like super loud. You get to hear that? <laughs> Can you hear Chris? He's so loud right now. Thomas Chrome YouTube store is the best. I drift to a dream. Is that tequila in my cup? Anything in my cup? I've been fake drinking. You see anything? Oh, shit. <laughs> Just what I need. Sticky stuff on my keyboard. Way to go, Chrome. Dumbass. Way to go, Chrome. Oh, Angela. <laughs> nice sticker. Thank you, Angela. Super appreciated. Yes, that is tequila in my cup. My favorite brand of tequila. Kate. I seen that, Kate. Hold on. Snores and bad breath are always no problem when they come from, from a dog. You got that right. Um, Kate, thank you for that. Yes, I am sipping on my favorite tequila right now. Um, you guys remember, um, you guys remember the guy I went out and filmed some videos with? He used to live in the Jeep. He's the guy that sewed my curtains, my uh my bug screens. Anyway, his name is Mustachio. That's his, he's got a big mustache now, so we're gonna call him Mustachio. Um, he bought me my favorite bottle of tequila for, for Christmas. Tavi tequila, right there. Tavi. It's got the little girl in the back. Well, check this out though. Can you guys see? There's a girl etched on the inside of this, like right on the inside. Like we can see her. Look at her. She's naked. Don't look at her boobs. Don't look at her boobs. Don't. But she's naked. That's her butt. Yeah, pretty cool, right? And it's etched on the inside of that glass. And it's super detailed. Like if you get a good look at her, she's super detailed. It's pretty wild, man. Yeah, Tabby Tequila, my favorite tequila on the damn planet. Um, the guy that owns this company, Tavi Ingridson, is the freaking man, dude. He used to send me these bottles when I used to DJ a lot. He used to actually ship me these bottles to my house. I made a little video one day on my um, Facebook. I was spinning. I used to have a whole – I was like a – buy tequila out the wazoo when I lived in my apartment, man. Like so many bottles of tequila. Um, so I made a video one day, and I had all my bottles, and I was like trying to choose one. Yeah, he messaged me. He's like, yo, how come I didn't see Tabby in there? Because I can't afford 100 bucks for a bottle of damn freaking tequila. It's a $100 bottle. So, um, yeah, Tabby sent me one. That was not long before I moved into the van. I think it's time to message him. Tabby, listen up, bro. 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 <laughs> Just a hint, bro. Um, good tequila. Um, cool story, though. If you guys are into cool stories, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Are you guys ready? Story time with Chrome. Okay. So the owner of this company, believe it or not, lives here. Lives here. And you can't make tequila in Canada. You can't make tequila, tequila anywhere else in the world. You can't even make tequila all the way across the country of Mexico. You can't. Tequila is only produced in one place in Mexico. That's the... Um, that's Jalisco, Mexico. Either the highlands or the lowlands of Jalisco, Mexico is the only place that you can make tequila and legitimately call it tequila. You can make... Um, hello. hello. That was my text message. You can make things... Uh, hello. Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> um, that was Joseph, a.k.a. Mustachio. He just texts me. Good dog, just tuning in. Glad you're enjoying the Tavi. Yeah, man. See, he's like, glad you're enjoying the Tavi. Super cool. Yes, your new name is Mustachio, by the way. That's what we're calling you from now on until the Mustachio goes away, and then we're gonna call you just bald guy. Just so you know. Um, what was I saying? So the story about Tavi, while we're on that topic. He is from here. This is made in it always has to say. Yeah, product from Mexico imported by Tudor Sales USA, Palm Desert, California, made in Jalisco, Mexico. So here's the deal. He is allergic to alcohol. He's a very big partier. He lives out here in Vancouver. Um, met him many times. 
he partied his whole life. I'm going to guess there was a lot of money kicking around the family. And um, then all of a sudden he started to get reactions to the chemical, like to, sorry, to the alcohol. He went to the doctor and the doctor's like, you're allergic to alcohol. Cut the booze out and see what happens. He stopped drinking. All of his symptoms went away. But he's like, dude, I need to party. I need to party. So when he was talking to the doctor, the doctor's like, look, try 100% pure blue agave. Okay, the agave plant that makes tequila has a different reaction to the body than most alcohols. It's the way the sugars are processed in the agave plant, um, like the plant, like not the big manufacturing plant, but the plant itself. The body reacts to it differently than most sugars and other alcohols. So he started to try a tequila and he's not a tequila guy. He started drinking tequilas. He hated them all. He's a guy who went through all the name brand tequilas. And then they went down and started to get like high branded tequilas from Mexico. And he couldn't find one that had the flavor that he wanted. So anyway, long story short, turns out tequila never gave him an allergic reaction. So he dug deep into his deep pockets and spent five years creating the tequila that he enjoys to drink. And that was the birth of Tabby. Tabby is his name. Really, really good dude. Maybe, maybe I'll message him. I'll do that. I'll send him a message. Maybe we can make a video with him. Might be kind of cool because they have a tequila expo here in Vancouver every year. Maybe it might be cool to get together with Tavi and do a little like tequila thing on him. I might be, might be kind of fun. He's got a super cool story and I mean, he's a really rad dude. But rumor has it, I don't know if both these are true, but rumor has it if you have diabetes, I'm not suggesting go get loaded, but the Sugars in tequila don't have the insulin reaction like most sugars and alcohol. So usually people with diabetics are usually pretty, pretty good with this. I don't know the truth on that. I heard that many times from people that are diabetics saying, look, I, the only thing I can drink is pure uh, agave and buy it from real tequila, not bullshit tequila. Don't buy it from that $35 bottle of tequila. Get the real pure shit, like good shit, like. If you're going to go name brand, go Tavi or Cabo Wabo or anything bigger. Not like the Patrons are good. I'm not a big fan, but Patrons are good. All right. Jennifer says not true. Yeah. So I don't know. So I've had many people say that. Um, but the difference is in that, from what I understand, is don't get plastered on it. From what I understand, that a couple of shots doesn't affect people like a couple shots of whiskey. Their sugar spikes are supposed to go pretty big. So I don't know about the 100% truth on that. So so Holly says it has a low glycemic response. And I think that's what it was, was the, um, was it just doesn't react. The sugars don't react the same in agave as they do with other alcoholic sugars, like whatever whiskey is made out of. I don't know anything about that stuff. I'm a tequila boy through and through. Diabetes. <laughs> Sorry, Justin Hughes, I had to say that. Uh, G more note Cruz has not gone to the vet yet. Um, he will be going if he doesn't get better in the five weeks that the breeder recommended, he will be going into the vet. But as of right now, he is not. He uh he's doing pretty good. He's walking around, he's putting pressure on the leg. See, and if he wasn't putting pressure on his leg, and like there's sometimes he walks, and I'm like, is he walking normal on that? That um, if he wasn't putting pressure on it and it was a constant limp, he would have been in the vet right now. Right now. If you know there's a deep down problem, he would have been in the vet today. But because like he'll he'll limp the first day and then he was walking great for like a week and then he bolted off the other day and then uh, bolted off the other day and hurt his leg again. We gave him a little bit of a setback. You have S dog. Huh? <laughs> it looks pretty good, this thing. Throw me a waste of stickers. Huh? What do you think? If I put another Van City Van Life one on here, this would be the sticker pack. I'm going to do that. Ugh. I'm running out of Van City Van Life stickers, by the way. Yep, hello. That was my phone again. Come on now. Where is the stickers? Sorry, guys. 
Whew. All right. <laughs> this is kind of fun. We're just like hanging out in the van, not doing anything. We're just being us. Roam your wasting valuable sticker packs. All right. So technically right now, my entire sticker packs that are for sale are on my hand. One, two, three, four. Oh. One more thing. You guys getting sick of my live stream yet? Whoa. And a business card. We'll do the cruisy one on the outside. Uh, cruises, business cards on the other side. <laughs> I want a Vanity Van Life trucker hat. Um, yeah, my merch store actually has all that stuff. I just haven't gotten around to having them, having them do it. Creating merchandise costs me money. So, and that's that's the bottom line on it. You know what I mean? Like there's some bigger things I'd like to do when it comes to like um, creating like different hats or different kinds of merch. It all costs me money on my end. I don't have to like buy the products, but the design aspect costs me money to make the merch. So some stuff's just going to have to wait until, um, until money's better after Christmas. So money should be back to normal probably by end of January. Um, I should have, some nice stuff back in my emergency fund. And um, because right now my mission is to not move around very much to keep my travels pretty slow and um, take January, February and March and just bank everything. So there might be some more informational videos on my channel and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, just trying to bank as much as I can because I'd like to leave on another trip in May. Bye. Like, bye-bye. See you later. May back on the road again. That's my plan. Um, I haven't had the chance to see my daughter very much because she's, she's busy. Like, she just, she, had, she couldn't see me last weekend. She couldn't see me this weekend. And the weekend that's coming up, she just about said no to me again. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me, kid? She's going to go dance and I got this. So, like, if you look at it, that'll be just about three weeks of me not being able to see her because she's too damn busy. So, um, as of May, bye-bye. I'm, I'm hitting the road again in May and um, she can come and see me when she's done school. I'll fly her out to me wherever I am. So my mission right now is just to bank everything that I can. That way, when I do leave, I have some money in the bank and I'm going to be traveling super slow this time. I am not going to be doing what I did this time. The travel this time was a big mistake by going that far, knowing that I had to be back in four months. Um, big mistake. Um, so yeah, next time I'd like to just travel and, Maybe go down to the U.S. in the Christmas, in, you know, at Christmas time. So I'll travel around Canada and until it gets cold, and then I might jump the border and head for like what? Who, who was that? Just said Florida, <laughs> uh, California. There it goes. Simply, simply beautiful, California. Yeah, probably by next winter. Maybe we'll see. That's kind of like the plan. Hibernating till spring, pretty much. It really sucks though because. Um, I need to keep producing content in order to make money to fund my travels. So without me producing video content, there's no money coming in. So there might be a lot of informational videos. Check this out, man. This is how big my list. It's cool that I'm streaming from here. And now you guys, I got my phone in hand. I'll show you the list of video ideas that I have. It's pretty long, man. I'm just, it's insane. There's page one, page two, oh, two and a half pages of video ideas. Look at this. I can't see. <laughs> not light. Yeah, tons of them. So they, there's no show. And these are like not ideas that I could put five of them in a video. These, like how I think about video ideas, I think about video titles. So I think about, okay, well, what would be a cool video title? So... Um, like this one here would be top three drives in Canada. There's a video. So me going through all my footage and putting together my top three drives so far I've taken in Canada. But, um, yeah, I got so many video ideas. So 
but I don't want to do too many talking videos. Talking videos get kind of boring for me sometimes. And I'm getting text messages here. Who texts me? Who who's bothering me? Well, that's Joseph. Oh, <laughs> happy camper kids. Have you talked to the sandwich Nazi? No, I have not talked to him yet. Um, he is on my list of, of videos to do. Um, we have a guy, I won't even uh, we have a guy here in just outside of Vancouver who's got a um he's got a like a sandwich shop and he's uh he's nicknamed the sandwich Nazi. That's not what this business is called. Ugh, getting itchy wearing that. But uh, he's a sandwich Nazi, so he's literally just rude. He's like totally rude to everybody. Like, like you, if you come in there and you got a cell phone and you're making orders from somebody else, he'll tell you to get out and, and start to man up and stop being a pansy. You know what I mean? He'd be like, yo, really taking orders for other people? Are you that kind of a pansy? Get out of my shop. He'll kick people out for that stuff. He's funny. Um, so yeah, I was talking to Andy about maybe making a video out there with that guy. I haven't called him yet though, but he is on my list, Andy. I have a lot of things on my list. What is one of your favorite non-van life YouTubers? Easy. Two of my top YouTubers right now will be David Dolbrick and uh, Peter McKinnon, then Casey Neistat, then Jesse. Those would be my top four YouTubers. And they've been on my top four forever. Casey Neistat was on my top a long time ago, but I liked his work ethic. Um, but now David Dolbrick would be number one. Peter McKinnon would be number two. Casey would be number three. And then uh, Jesse. Jesse's got a cool channel, man. He does some pretty cool shit. Grumpy old van. Two dollars on the pay. Two dollars on the on the super chat says check out his Patreon, please. Mike, thank you. Uh, your response was Cruz healing up. Okay, yep. Um, tissue or ligament injuries are not a very fast fix. Um, like the breeder said, if he doesn't get better in five to six weeks, send him in. But, um, but she told me that if, um, she told me this could be a five or six month heal. She's like any kind of a torn thing like that could take a very long time to heal up. He was a maniac that day. He hurt himself, man. He was running. Like there was a couple of Huskies out in the field and he was like literally trying to keep up with them. He was a total maniac. <laughs> Kelly says, David Dolbrick. Yeah, dude, he's my favorite, man. Dude, that guy's like, dude, I love that kid, man. He's such a cool kid. Who is Jesse? Search that name. Search Jesse and you'll find him. Chrome owes me pay now. <laughs> uh, how did Cruz get injured? I just said he was just running around with a couple of Huskies out in the field here in Vancouver and it was just a super active day. And I think when, when he was running around with the Huskies that he just like went too far, too fast. And I didn't notice that he was limping until the next morning. He couldn't get up the next morning. He was like limping, limping, but he was great all night long that night. Oh, Holly. Thank you. Merry Christmas to my favorite weirdo. Thank you, Holly. Oh, that was very sweet of you. Do you wish? <laughs> Do I wish I was in the vlog squad, man? <laughs> ah, dude, I don't know if I could survive in the vlog squad. <laughs> oh, hey, Doris. Doris, the caravan. So just so you guys know, while we got you guys here, you guys seen that lady in the comments there? It says Doris, the caravan. She texts. Hold on. I'm going to find that. I was very proud of this. Okay, can you guys read that? Damn it, Chrome. I just pooped in a bag. And I said, welcome to van life. That's Doris the Caravan. Yep, called you out right there, Doris the Caravan. She texts me and said that she shit in a bag for the very first time. I was very proud of you. That was like a very proud moment. It's a proud moment where I'm like, oh, it was like one of my kids like finally had their first poop. Oh, so good. <laughs> you know, like the first time your kid poops in the toilet for your very first time, you remember that sense of pride? I had that pride for you, Doris the Caravan. I was like, oh, one of my kids used the toilet. 
<laughs> That's it. She's going to stop supporting me now. You watch. <laughs> ah, hilarious. Sorry, I had to do it. Good content. It's all about content. Car drinking. If I'm excited for my van meetup on Christmas Eve, one of 60 people will show up. Um, Yeah, I am pretty excited for it. I'm a little bit worried for Cruz, but um, I am a little excited about it, though. I'm just worried because people are going to want to see Cruz, and I'm worried that he's going to re-hurt himself again and have another big setback. And if he does have another setback on Christmas Eve, he's going to go to the vet right away. I'm going to take him into the vet as soon as um, as soon as it's all over. Like on, like the vets are back in business. I'm going to take him to the vet if if he does have a setback. Okay, let's all send Chrome an email when you have a shit. It was a text message, by the way, Mikey. <laughs> Jay, five bucks on the super chat. Jay, thank you. Merry Christmas to Chrome. It's been. A been with you since day one thanks for all the inspiration you're very welcome but just so you know when you live in a van your life's gonna fall apart dude look at me right now look at me i'm like thug life in it there's your thumbnail for the i'm gonna let me let this replay go just because i'm like i wasn't gonna like put this thing on a repost but i think i just might you gotta find a good thumbnail for that one <laughs> Good times. Ooh. It's the tequila talking. No, there's probably been like an ounce and a half in this cup, and I've been sipping it for the last hour and a half. You have not seen me top up this cup, and I've been like taking baby sips. There's probably still probably half an ounce still left in here. I wish it was the tequila talking. I had no intentions on doing an hour and a half live stream tonight. I thought it was just going to be like two seconds. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ow. You guys want some stickers? I'll throw these ones for free in an envelope. <laughs> it's got my DNA on the back. You guys probably don't want these stickers. They got my DNA on the back. Oh, I got sneeze. All right, now I lost my chat again. Mm. Ow! Man, these would look good on a on a two two my Van City Van Life one in the front. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah, man. Holla holla at ya. LOL. How much have you really had to drink? Um, honestly, probably about an ounce of tequila. That's it. I'm a big. I like to sip my tequila. I don't tequila. When you're drinking a hundred dollar bottle of tequila, you sip it. You don't take shots of it. That is a no-no when it comes to good quality tequila. You sip it like it's a damn good scotch. Would that be another one? Oh, yeah, man. Take it easy. So much more enjoyable when you can just sip it and enjoy it. East Coast, down and out. Thanks, thanks, man. Chrome, you're an inspiration for me here in the CTUSA. Oh, content in the travels. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> What well, time is it in BC? It's 7.33 p.m. Uh, irresponsible, thank you. Got to go soon, up at 4 a.m. Mountain time for work. Thanks for coming to the live stream, man. Thanks for the super chats. Oh, Hank, Hank Van Life, thank you. Get some coffee and cruise a treat. Man, Cruz is like, he's on a diet right now. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get a little bit of weight off his his fat butt thank you hank it's super appreciated so raise a hands everybody raise your hands how many people have watched david dolbrick on youtube well put your hands up guys come on um ed the gentleman that um 
my new friend in uh, icy cold Manitoba. Um, I introduced him to David Dobrik, and he said after I left, after I left, he went binge watching watching David Dobrik. <laughs> ah, good content, good content. See, vanquished dude. Who? David Dobrik. He's killing it on YouTube right now, man. Just, just a good kid. You know you're old when you're calling a 24 year old a kid. God damn it! <laughs> oh, am I really that old? Coach Nick, you're not late to the party. The party just started, Nick. You're not late at all. Did <laughs> you see that? You're not late to the party at all, Coach Nick. Welcome to the madness. 4, 1034 in East Kentucky. How you doing, Coach? <laughs> Sophie eBay, 24 is a kid to an old person. And because I called him a kid makes me an old person. <laughs> I could be David's father. That's the truth. I'm like a walk-in advertisement right now. I guess I should not. Oh. Hey. Walk-in advertisement. Represent. <laughs> There's only one coach here, dang it. Twenty-four is a baby. See? You know you're old when you're calling a twenty-four year old a baby. I call the twenty-four year old a kid. If you're calling them a baby, that means you're just like if I'm if I'm aged here and I'm calling a twenty-four year old a kid and you're calling the twenty-four year old old a baby, your age must be <laughs> a little up here somewhere. My kid will be 25 on December 21st. Yeah, we are old. Um, <laughs> I think my oldest, I don't know how old she is now. She's um, 20. Shit, I should know this. Her birthday is on Boxing Day. She's 24, 23. My oldest, my oldest kid. <laughs> Susie born in 1959. My favorite, my favorite car Came out in 1959. 59 Impala. Whoa, like the back bumper on that thing's like a diving board. And like the big, oh, so sexy. The 59 Impala, so nice. That was my dream lowrider back in the day. That's the one I wanted to build. Hey, Giselle from Puerto Rico. Um, My ex-wife's name was Giselle. I was married to a Giselle. She used to hate it. I used to call her Jizz all the time. She hated it. She goes, Giselle. I'm like, whatever, Jizz. What's what? My wife hated me, I think. <laughs> I'm such a jackass all the time. I still talk to my ex-wife sometimes. She messages me here and there. Always starts off with, hey, douchebag. Hey, ex-wife. Corey says, thanks for the info on the Jackery. Not a problem. I'm a big fan of that company. I thought it was pretty cool. You guys still watching me? <laughs> All right, let's try this one. Now I can't see. Shh. Um, so um I'm getting confused because I can't see anything. Hi. Let's just do this so I can see a little bit. So I thought it was pretty cool. If anybody watches Will Prouse's channel, um, I think everybody needs an electronical nerd in their life like Will Prouse. This guy's just like an electronic genius. Um, he made a video ripping apart that Jackery battery. And I remember seeing that video and I was like, man, oh, thank you for making this. It was pretty cool because people give me a hard time for, quote, preaching um, Jackery and always mentioning Jackery all the time. And they're like, oh, oh, oh. But then when I watched him rip apart that Jackery battery and was so amazed on how well put together it is, I'm not getting paid to say this, by the way. Jackery, you can give me extra this month if you'd like <laughs> for saying this. But it was cool to watch him rip that thing apart and be shocked with how well it's made. That made me feel good. It was one of those videos where I'm like, mm, yes, because I'm not the person kind of person to rip it apart. And even if I did, I wouldn't even know what it was for. That was pretty cool. Holly's like, I'm goofy as hell. <laughs> Do 
Some of these stickers are still sticking. Yeah, Hall Hatch is like real cool. He is a cool dude, man. I don't know. He's I like him because he's very good with his words. You know what I mean? He speaks very clear, very well, very easy to understand. Um, pretty great. He's not paying me to plug him either. I've never even chatted with a guy ever even once. I just think what he's doing is pretty awesome. So Will Prouse, high five to you, bro. Good job. From one weirdo to to you. <laughs> if he ever watches this, it's like, if he ever watches this, I'm like, Will Prouse, you're doing a good job. People are like, Will's like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Hi, I'm Chrome from Van City Van Life. Welcome to my channel. And after being such a nerd, Mike's still promoting me to come over and visit me on Patreon. Trust me, guys. You don't want to support this guy. This guy's a whack job and a weirdo. You really want to give this guy money? Are you sure? <laughs> Patty Crane's like, go Mike! Mike's like my pimp. I think deep down inside of Mike's soul, he's always wanted to be a pimp. So he just literally pimps me out. Grumpy old van used to be Mike Brown. Now he's grumpy old van because he just bought a grumpy old van. Yeah. So <laughs> Justin Hughes, I refuse to grow up. Yeah. Growing up's an option. It's not a necessity. Those who grow up have shitty lives. And that's the truth. And if anybody wants to fight back on that comment saying, eh, you have to grow up, that probably means you're probably not as happy as you probably could be if you just learn to be a child a little bit once in a while. Kids have more fun. And you can still be a kid and be an adult. It's true. It's true. Totally the truth. Huh. Um, Giselle, super cool of you though. Giselle's like, she tried to show support and tells me that the feature, if you're talking about Patreon should work in your area. If that's where you're talking about Giselle, um, Patreon should work. Mike Brown, can you throw the Patreon link in the, um, in the comments? Cause yeah, the YouTube feature, the YouTube join button thing might not work in some areas because YouTube's obviously working to over launch things and launch things in certain areas, but Patreon should be worldwide. Cause I know we got people from all over the place on Patreon. That one should work. Now, growing up means growing old. David, sorry, man to tell you, but growing old is something you can't avoid, but growing up, you can't avoid. You could be old as balls and shitting your pants and still feel like a fun 14 year old kid and just do fun things. Growing up, up is an option growing old well you're just gonna sorry man <laughs> embrace it look at this look at this look at this stuff look at it oh, this gray yeah welcome welcome to the freaking madhouse car junk you got that right man you're only as old as you feel ain't that the damn truth man we're whew, hour 45 minutes <laughs> to receive to Canada five years old forever I feel like a five-year-old time look at me now come on I'm 45 and I'm sitting here doing a live stream of stickers all over my face ow all right good times shit oh great newbies on here need to binge watch Chrome's first videos with disco um, man, today, you guys, I went back and watched a couple of my older videos today, and it was a really great feeling to, to kind of look back at some of the days that I've had, because when you have a complete video library of everything you did for the last two years, just about every day that was worth filming was on camera. It was pretty cool today to go back and reminisce a little bit. And, um, yeah, I watched some really great videos back there. So if you guys go back, even if you go back like three or 400 videos, I got like close to 700 videos now. But if you go back and watch like from video 200 forward, it's some amazing shit back there. So crazy. And sometimes it's just like, like today I went, probably spent a half an hour today. I'm flipping through all the videos, watching some clips of it. And I was like, man, I did that. It's just insane. The shit that's back there. <laughs> Nancy always wondered if YouTubers watch themselves. Heck yeah, we do. 
You know, because I, like I said, though, like to me, I have a it's like you looking back at, at, at old road trips and flipping through old photo albums. Well, I have like hundreds of videos from every trip I've ever taken, which is pretty damn amazing. Imagine that. Imagine you vlogging every moment of your life and being able to go back and see what you did two years ago on this day. I could do that because, I mean, I normally upload every day or I did anyway. So it's pretty cool to go back and kind of see what I did around this same week last year. It's pretty sweet. Uh, ninth element van uh, and nine, ninth element adventure life. What's up, weirdo from Oregon? What's up, man? Do you save what you don't upload? Um, yes, I have every single piece of video footage I have ever filmed. I've kept everything since day one. I have like terabytes of old footage. And because when I upload a video, just say like the video that I uploaded today, which was um, the little Christmas party I went to at the golf club, there was probably an hour and 45 minutes worth of footage and a 16 minute video. That means all that extra footage is just sitting on that hard drive waiting for the day that I might dig through it and use some of it or it's just going to stay there forever and never get touched. But yes, I keep every single thing I film. Everything. I miss you playing music. Do you regret not DJing anymore? Nope, David, not at all. Um, I don't miss... Okay, because... um. So, David, you've always obviously been here since the first part of the channel. You guys got to see me at the very tail end of the music. So I was holding on to the private golf club because the paying, the events were very good. It was like a thousand dollar wedding. Thank you. I'll take that. Yes, please. But that was the tail end of my DJ stuff. And I was holding on to that stuff because, um, because it funded the beginning sides of my whole van life adventure. And I, did I enjoy doing weddings? Hell no. Weddings fucking suck. They suck. No matter how you sugarcoat that shit, they suck. So, and I'm not a wedding DJ. I've been a club and a, and a tour DJ and um, doing like radio, doing my radio show for those multiple years. Those two and some years we did the, well, I was, I was on internet radio for probably about a year. And then we shifted my radio show into FM radio. That was two years long. Just the FM one alone was two years. But it was at the tail end of that that I decided, well, let's slow down a little bit. And let's start doing corporate events and weddings. So I only did that for about, about a year. Well, I did it for three years at the golf club. But I just dabbled there. And I also sent in other DJs. I had other DJs on my team that was doing weddings for me. So it wasn't me. And it wasn't until I moved into the van that I started doing the weddings myself because I'd be off doing nightclub events and other events while I was sending DJs to the golf club making that extra money. But um, yeah, you guys caught it right at the end when I was I was doing them myself. And to be honest, I hated it. I hated it. Every time I did a wedding, it sucked. It's not me. It's not who I am. So leaving that part of it was was very very welcomed i really enjoyed walking away from that it felt great and i felt good that i, be, I had the chance to give it to give it to my buddy bobby um kind of keeps the money in the family sort of thing you know what i mean which was really awesome but i don't miss it um i do miss playing out live sometimes i do miss the concerts and sometimes the big club events i miss that stuff too but all in all i don't miss it a lot i've been playing around with my dj stuff in my van and I might buy myself a new piece of DJ gear for myself for Christmas. But making DJ mixes in the van solves all that excitement for me. You know what I mean? Like, I get pretty pumped up about making a DJ mix. Um, I posted one of my radio shows on my page at hear the whoops, shit. Hear this dot at forward slash DJ Chrome. Go check it out. Here, I just posted it. Go to that link. I just posted one of my radio shows. I was like, I think it was episode 83 of that radio show. But go check it out, man. That shit was dope. It's like just about two hours and 40 minutes of pure me. I did the DJ mix. I did, it's so awesome. Super cool. You guys will like it. If you're not into my kind of music, then no. But um, 
Ninth element. Will I DJ my Christmas? No, I won't. Um, I've had a few people actually actually ask me to um to DJ some events and I just won't. And even my own gathering, there's no need for a DJ at a gathering because if I DJ the gathering, then I can't meet and talk to people. You know what I mean? As soon as the headphones go on, the rest of the world is just they're gone. Like there's no time to be listening to anybody else. So yeah, I'll never DJ any of my own events. Like for my van life gathering stuff. It'd just be no fun for everybody that's there. What's my favorite Christmas cookie? I don't know. That's a good question. That's a really good question. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, my God. Paulette, if you're a house head, holy fucking shit. Go listen to that shit. Um, so, um, Paulette... I ran a two year long syndicated, meaning sold to radio stations, a two year long syndicated electronic music show. It was a three hour broadcast um, music show on FM stations. It was all electronic. And I'm a freaking elect, I'm a house head. Like, I am an electronic music junkie, like out the wazoo. If it doesn't beat at 128 BPM, I'm out <laughs> big time. You will love it if you're a househead. You will freak the shit out when you read when, when you listen to that one I just posted today. Pretty wild. Shortbread cookies, heck yeah. I mean, I actually bought those um, shortbread cookies that are in. They're from like Denmark or something. I think they're in that blue round tin. They're like a classic Christmas shortbread cookie. They have all the different sizes. One looks like a pretzel. Some of them are round with swirls in it, but they're in a blue tin. I remember getting them. I remember my grandma having them when I was a kid. So this shit's like been around for a while. I don't know what they're called. Ooh, frosted sugar cookies. Heck yeah, I'm in for that. Guys, stop talking about food, please. As soon as you talk about food, I get demo starving. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Chrome will eat anything. Yeah, Chrome will eat anything that is free. You got that right. I'm like, what the hell is that noise oh yeah it's Cruz he's snoring away on the ground man he's like just pfft, sawing logs down there Ugh. all right guys I think I'm gonna let you go um touristy to Canada touristy to Canada New Year's I have no New Year's plans nothing no plans at all for New Year's um New Year's for me was really chill last year too as well it's pretty pretty chill. I'm not too sure. Maybe I'll um because I, I seen on my DJ site where I upload my mixes to that you can live stream. So maybe I might do a live stream DJ mix on New Year's Eve. Ooh, that might be a fun one. Ooh, what a good idea. Ooh, I'll look into that. It's gonna take some. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a a way for me to connect to the software. That'd be a fun live stream. I mean, a fun music live stream. Would you guys enjoy that? You guys will probably hate my music. That's the problem with my music, man. Me being such a such a house head and a, an electro junkie, pff, most people are like, what the hell was that? <laughs> people always see that kind of music as repetitive shit. That's cool. You be there live stream, DJ Chrome Live. Heck yeah. Anyway, everybody, I'm going to let you guys go. It's raining as crap outside, and uh, it's nice hanging out with you guys. I like this one today. This was a really good one. I um I enjoy live streams where they're not so much pressure, where we could just kind of hang out. And what makes a good live stream are the people that are in it. Definitely the people that are in it, because if these conversations and the comments are pretty good and they're not too serious, um, it makes for a good time hanging out in the van. All right, I am going to post this one again so everybody can watch it. And see me being a freaking whack job. <laughs> All right, you guys. We're going to let you guys go. Where's that off button? I'm done with you. I'm done. Peace out. I'm going to end this live stream, call me. Where's the button? There it is. Bye.